All right, guys, welcome back. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. And today, we have another box, another collection from a client in California. What's going on? Well, people are selling their cards to move on, retire, pay off their car, pay off their house, move to Hawaii. Doesn't matter where the hell you're going. People don't want to work anymore. And they're taking money off their assets they've made money on over the years. And Magic the Gathering is one of them. All right, guys, enjoy the video. There's a letter that he wrote about where and wh how he started Magic the Gathering, what he loves about Magic, and then we're going to go through the cards. And these will all be on sale on our eBay store. The link will be below. Check it out. All right, guys. Yes, welcome back. All right, as advertised, this is a collection from a client uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, this gentleman sent a collection on consignment. If you're looking to have an, uh, a, a collection of praise or consign, contact me on vintagemagic.com and hit the services tab for more information uh, or just go to contact us. I'll be happy to help you. All right. If you want to bid on the cards, we'll probably list these cards. Uh, uh, when this video is up, they'll probably start listing. So feel free to bid on them. Lots of cards. We have to go back to the video several times. There's lots of things to look at, but don't miss out. They're all on no reserve. There's a lot of smaller cards in this collection, so uh, I'm not sure if we're going to put them in lots. We'll figure that out later. All right, so uh, here is the letter. Hi, Daniel. I used to collect sports cards in San Francisco Bay Area during my youth in the 1980s. Wow. And into the early 90s. After graduating from high school, my... Interest in sports cards declined, I wonder why, as I entered college. About this this time, a close friend introduced me to Magic. I think it was like late 1993 or 90, early 1994. My friend said I love this game because of my competitive spirit. I enjoyed the strategy involved with the game as well as the personal interactions that Magic provided. After playing the first time, I was hooked. Now I had cards that I could actually use to play the game, not not just at pictures and remembering statistics. Remember statistics, sports cards. Okay, so uh, did I read that right? Yeah, not just pictures and remember and, and remembering statistics. So basically, not just b baseball cards, sports cards. My friend and I would uh, play almost every day, and I would try to find local tournaments on the weekend. I introduced several of my other friends from the sports car days to Magic. We had a small group that would try to come up, would always try to one-up each other by creating new decks. My favorite was Control Millstone deck. All right, I like that deck. In 1996, I transferred to college in Southern California. I didn't know many people in the area, but there was a game shop three blocks from the house. I became a regular in the shop and realized their knowledge of Game level gameplay was incredible. Well, I would we would go to Costa Mesa, uh, that's in so and, and kind of uh, SoCal, uh, Orange County, for tournaments just about every weekend. And the vendors had every card there for sale. I picked up Power Nine and some other strong cards to be in order to be competitive for the Type One tournament scene. While I was playing, I knew that I had cards that had value. But, but not to the degree of what they are today. When I got engaged, I needed some extra cash, so I bought a ring. I sold some of my powerful cards, including the Library of Alexandria. I loved the, the game of Magic so much, I even bought a few decks with me, brought a few decks with me on my honeymoon in Maui, okay, to teach my wife how to play. <laughs> I wonder how that went, actually. Hey! Hey, we're on our honeymoon. Uh, it's really, uh, it's 85, balmy, humid. Uh, you got a corona? Hey, hey what was a magic wife? Uh, what? Uh, you didn't tell me this when we got married. You were a MTG crack addict. Just kidding. All right. That was the only time I ever sold any of my cards. As I got older and started a family, my priorities changed, and I didn't play very much. I would still buy cards occasionally. And even enter some booster draft tournaments. But I, I was never able to quite recapture what magic meant to me in the college years. 
After all these years, becoming a teacher, a coach, and watching my children grow up, these cards have been sitting in my closet. I realize that the value of the cards have grown to a point where it makes sense to sell them, sell them all. I don't see myself getting to MTG the same way again. Hopefully, someone can enjoy them as much as I have over the past couple of decades. All right. Well, man. Woo. You know, I got to say, these kind of stories are just really awesome. I mean, I uh, everybody has their story. Uh, as you guys know, I started magic in high school. Uh, went kind of passing down the hallway for lunchtime. And they were playing this card game, you know, right? And they... Uh, I was wondering what's going on. I looked at Wrath of God, Vesuvian Doppelganger, you know, all these awesome, beautiful artworks. I'm like, why are you guys not playing with sleeves and protecting the cards or whatever? And, uh, well, penny sleeves or whatever, right? And uh, they're like, no, it's a card game. Come play. So I played. It's a great game. But, you know, all in all, I never got really competitive. But this guy, this guy really was more diehard than me and really loved the game. And I got to say, you know, I, I... You know, I'm not saying this because I kind of wish I would have, but I wish I would have played more. I wish I would have had the opportunity to go to some of the, like the events or whatever, Grand Prix, and um, you know, the problem was I didn't really have the network, and I, you know, obviously I was in the Seattle area, but it just, I just wasn't as into it as much as the gaming part. Um, I just didn't make as many decks as I should have and play. I mean, maybe it's a money thing. I don't know what it is, but I just didn't really get into it. I kind of wish I did. Um, I guess that's a part of me where hearing the stories actually, I don't know, like, this is sound kind of weird, but hearing this guy's story makes me go back to the era of those years, kind of like, you know, just the crazy years of the, the 90s. And just, you know, what what if I did that? What if I was able to time warp into that and buy some of those packs? I mean, I don't even care if it was Legends even. I mean, I was, I couldn't afford it, but imagine if I did or Beta. I mean, Alpha, geez. I mean, I don't even know what I would say. And to hear stories of people buying cards, like vendors, I didn't even do that. Like, I went to the card shop and uh, they barely had any cards, except there was this card shop called Andy Sports Cards in Bellevue, Washington. And I actually kind of bought into uh, some cards, mostly revised at Ice Age. And at that point, it, you know, all the older cards were more expensive than I could afford at the time, right? So um, it just, it just, I wish I was there, you know, and thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing that memory. Okay, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video coming up. Uh, it basically has this collection broken down. It's kind of cool to kind of look at all the old cards. Lots of variety, even some new cards. If you're interested again to bid on them, go to my eBay store link right now. We have auctions all the time or store items. Uh, if you are interested in consigning, uh, you want a consultation, appraisal, whatever, contact me at vintagemagic.com. Contact us. All right. And thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great day and enjoy the video. Take care. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com. All right, guys, and we're back. All right, I hope you guys enjoy the letter from my client from California. Really great letter. Thank you so much. Great story. All right, guys, so this is his collection... Uh, he has a lot of smaller cards too, so uh, those are not uh, part of the collection, but um, it just, there was just so much of it, you know, so he just said, yeah, you know, oh, this is a good, this is a good setup, so he has these small boxes, I like that, okay, what do we got here, I like this, it's nice and organized too, use one FedEx large box, wow, okay, Yes. Yeah, so, you know, I, I kind of mentioned this in the video before. Uh, these are just all, like, starter decks and stuff of, I think they're just booklets. All right, so there we go.
All right, so we got here. All right. So, yeah, so I mentioned this before about why people are selling their collections uh, in all seriousness, because I joke around, you know, often in videos. Um, people are moving on from Magic the Gathering collectibles. A lot of people, you know, have asked me, you know, especially during the corona, they've kind of had the time to dig through kind of what they've had in their, you know, their closets, etc. And they've realized that, man, these Magic the Gathering cards and collectibles are some serious coin. Wow. So, um, yeah, it's kind of interesting, you know. I, I've i seen this uh, actually, you know, throughout the years, but it's also accelerated quite a bit. Uh, as of late, um, and I wouldn't doubt it keeps growing over the years. Uh, I just put out a video about estate planning, by the way, um, why it's really critical to kind of think about the future. Well, this is one of those things, you know, you can pay off your house. These are just, I think, uh, little booklets and stuff, instruction booklets. Yeah, but people can pay off their houses now with Magic the Gathering cards. Obviously, a Pokemon sports cards, same idea, definitely. Yeah, without a doubt, these collectibles have become retirement level, and it is uh, definitely something people you're going to see more and more over the years. Um, you know, oftentimes people ask me like, "Wow, what the heck? Why why are people just liquidating right now? Why do they hold on to it?" And understand, there's a lot of people who are actually not in the in the mix of the game anymore they're not in the game by the way all of these collectibles will be on our ebay store or uh, on sold on our ebay store on ebay auction however some of these might be sold uh kind of off ebay type of thing because well some of these are just probably not really ebayable so these are just random packs um and we'll see what we got but all in all if you have any questions go to my link right below and help my client out and uh, place your bid, everybody. Yeah, but, you know, like, like I was saying, people don't really have the resources and the network to sell these cards, you know, if that makes sense. People are not, uh, you know, they don't have the YouTube channel or they don't have a, a eBay store. So they want to use co companies with a consignment type of service type of thing like I do, uh, appraisal service. And uh, yeah, kind of really want to sell these cards, you know, move on with their lives. Okay, so this is a deck. Um, I think you made this deck. Interesting. I don't know what type. Maybe you guys can help me out. What type of deck? Uh, well, I don't think this is a deck, actually, because you can't have three demonic tutors. But these are just some nice revised cards. Soul rings and lightning bolts. And I think what he did here is he really kept... The cards, um, just more playables and such, which is really cool. Mana Crypt, love this card. Man, I had the opportunity to buy this artwork years ago. Look at that, four of them. Wow, four OG Mana Crypts. Wow, this is going to be a great opportunity for you guys to buy some reserve list cards. Add to that reserve list stash. Fly men. I don't know if that's reserve list, but still, Arabian Nights, man, love it. Yeah, people, you know, people are at the point in their lives where they want to, like, you know, pay off their college tuition for their their kids, or they want to pay off their house in some cases, take a vacation, whatever it may be. It's kind of an ongoing thing, and I wouldn't doubt this trend keeps going on. Um, but it's not a bad sign. Like people have said. Well, you know, that's bad for the market. There's a lot of flooding of collectibles and such. And the thing is, the appetite for the collectibles is really high still. It's really, really high. So, you know, I would say, man, there's tremendous interest in the collectibles. Oops, this must, oh, there's more in here. So, hold on a second. There's still tremendous interest for the collectibles. You guys see my feet? You guys love my feet, don't you? They smell great. I just took a shower, everybody. Yeah, you know, I I think that um, a lot of people have not just kind of in their lives they've 
changed their mind, you know, like they thought they would keep these long term for the rest of their life. But, you know, circumstances come, you know, like could be anything from losing a job, some cases, um, death of a family member, etc. And, you know, it, it really changes your life, give you a perspective of what really matters. So, um, you know, this was not the case here. This is more about kind of moving on and passing them on to someone that appreciates them and wants to add them to their collections and such. But um, that th this is going to keep going on over the years for sure. I know um, a lot of you, you know, who are working at you know, you know, jobs right now, stuff like that, they're, uh, I think it's all newer cards. Um, they're, they're working at jobs right now and they're trying to, you know, if we have the 401k going on, but you, you have this passion for gaming and collecting and you're kind of wondering, how do I get the hell out of it? You know, how do I get out of the job, do what I really want to do, which is play more games, maybe sell cards, um, get in that industry. I got to say, you know, one of the quickest ways you can do it is buy collections and start brokering. Let me just see if this is all new stuff. Yeah, there's some old stuff here, I guess. Legends for Spike. Yeah, just start start selling cards and be involved in those collections because um, you'd be surprised. There's lots of um, those of FBB City of Brassica. That's cool. I always like that card. Actually, that's uh, Chronicles FBB. Sorry, I've always said go after it. Buy here's some uh, uh, Italians mana drains. There's three of them. Thoughtsies. And uh, just go after it. You know, the thing is, a lot of times people don't are, are afraid to meet people. I've noticed that trend where I'm like, Dan, I don't really like meeting people. Um, I don't want to talk to them that much uh, in person. I don't like that. I just want to pay them off, right? Mm. That's going to be kind of hard. Um, it, then it's going to be like the Rudy-esque thing where you have mail a a shipping label and all that kind of stuff. But that's why what's great about magic is there's such a wide array of ways for people to do business. You have people that mail stuff in on the buy list. They don't want to talk to the vendors. Uh, they just want to get paid online. And then you have ways where it's more about, you know, the magic fest. You're meeting them in a hotel room, hotel lobby, whatever. I've done so many crazy deals and so many large numbers um, in person, especially, but regardless, it, 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 there's such a variety of how the way you can do business and magic and in sports cards and in sports cards, uh, believe it or not, I was, uh, I did lots of deals just like this in the world of sports cards. And back in the day, the prices were just not the same. Um, you know, there were some really great monumental sales, but all in all, the acceleration, the growth of sports cars is unreal. All right, so these are just Battle Royale. I, I don't even know what these are. These are new cards. Uh, I'm just not even going to open them. Um, I'm just going to assume that there's four of these here. Just doing some work. Hi, Nick. Oh, nice. Did you drink your juice? Yeah, I did. Okay. Well, Daddy, do work, okay? I need the juice. You need what? What's in there is just cards, magic card. Remember, look, magic card. These are more of these decay deck. It's like a pre-construction deck. Card deck. These are not really as valuable um, as. I mean, there are probably, I think some Urza Saga ones. But uh, mag magic cards. That's a box to put cards in. But right now, Nick, that yeah, you can put that in. Yep. But you know, they never became super valuable. So that was that box. Super valuable. I mean, um, there is some, you know, people want to collect entire booster boxes and such. Let me adjust this. But all in all, it, they're not like super, super valuable. All right. Let's see. Nick, come on. Stop. Okay. I have to do some work, please. Can I play this? Yes. Nick. Hold on a sec, guys. All right. Yeah. So it's hard with kids, by the way. All right. So I think there's like six of these boxes. Man, there's lots of little cards here. Wow, okay. 
Yeah, this collection's pretty widespread. There's a lot of little cards. So uh, I'm not sure if all this is going to be eBayable. Um, we're going to have to see, you know, but. Let's see, you got a lot of Lions' cards. It's really just Peldegriff and, well, and uh, what do you call it? Force of Will. We have four of those, I think, earlier. Two, or three or four. Nature's Wrath, Sylvan Spirit Guide, then Discover Paradise. There's some just a Rainbow Veil, not super valuable. Some Ice Age cards. Ice Age cards, uh, pretty much it's Jester's Mask, Jester's Cap. They've gone up a lot. Quite a bit over the, the years now. Well, actually, no, you know what? Actually, that card's actually been pretty stagnant. When Jester's Cap and all that first came out, um, it was very, very, very valuable. Now it's uh, this random and steering bridge. Now it's kind of like uh, they finally caught up essentially with inflation in some weird way, but still, it's not the same. Not definitely not the same. All right, these are all snow covered lands. I see snow covered islands. So yeah, we have to figure out how to put these in a lot or something for clients. All right, next box. Yeah, I mean it. You know, there's a lot of. See, those, like, like I just showed you those lands, right? There's a lot of value in those for, um, like, if you're making decks, you can sell them online and such as an individual store. But it's brutal selling them individually as one card, right? So you got to sell them as one lot. I'll just put this over here. All right, next box. Let's see, this one's a little lighter. Okay. Deck box, all right. Let's see what we got. So, all right. I just love looking at these collections over the years. Wow, this is cool. Okay. All right. Here we go. Some more revised cards. Revised cards have gone up a lot, especially with all the reserveless buying um, with the, you know, pandemic and all that i mean revive every single booster box has gone crazy i mean legends booster boxes thirty thousand dollars basically for a box i mean it's crazy i remember those were fifteen thousand people i remember they were like three thousand people got mad and now they're uh you know thirty thousand dollars insane one of those were like at fifteen thousands for the longest time and they just kind of spiked up again and i want to I wouldn't doubt, these are unlimited here, and some couple betas. I wouldn't doubt that they keep rising. I, I honestly, like, uh, it's just, it's kind of, you know, people say, well, you're, you're crazy, Dan. There's no way. Uh, yes way, because I think, like, with Pokemon the way it is, old magic boxes, why not? Why, why are they not the same as, you know, there's so many $30,000 Pokemon boxes now. They're it's more rare in many cases, right? Why are they not the same type of level? So I think you'll see over the years growth uh, in Magic Box's seal product. Now, I would be careful. There is a lot of resealed crap out there. Um, that's the hardest part with these boxes. So um, I would, I'd be very, very, very careful. Very careful. All right. What do we got? Box number three. Yeah, it's 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 kind of hard, you know. As a buyer, uh, I I don't even like. There's a people, a lot of people offer me boosters boxes, and I'm very wary about it. My rule, my rule is pretty simple. I generally only buy from Wizards of the Coast employees or card shop owners or large stores, people I've worked with for a lot of the years. But if it's a resale. Where they're basically saying, oh, I got this from this guy. Here's uh, some unlimited Pison Psionic Blast. Love this card. It's fun. A couple Chronicles, City of Brass. And three, four Necropotents. All right, Ice Age. That's awesome. You know, it's, it's hard because it's like, oh, I, I have a friend that basically owned these boxes back in the day. And, you know, you know whatever. I mean, it's like saying... It's just, they could easily lie about that. Uh, here's a Wheel of Fortune. Oh, that's a little bit interesting. This is uh, interesting. 
this one is not only is it uh, miscut, you see this? But it has a fuzziness to it. That's so strange. Wow. Uh, I have never seen that. Looks real to me. Yep. That is so weird. I'm gonna have, when I sell these, I'm gonna have to but look at the um, resolution here, guys. It's a little weird. Check that out. You see that? Wow, that's kind of cool. Wish my friend Tavis King was here. He'd probably tell me why. But I'm guessing the the printer itself. Here's the artist. This is a little interesting. Look at that. It's miscut, but look at the um, the blurriness of the artist. A little interesting. Yeah, you know, I I gotta say, Magic has a lot of quirky cards and miscut misprints. Lots of lots of interest in that over the years. Lots of people are interested in that. Pretty damn cool. All right, the Serendipity Freet misprint. With Subin Doppelganger and Crusade, which we can't even sell. So we're uh, on eBay, that is. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of kind of interesting. You know, people also uh, played a lot back in the day. I think this guy played a lot of different decks um, and also collected. And people, you know, kind of, it's funny. They're just finding their decks randomly. Um, again, you know, just randomly. So it just, uh, let's do box number four. Randomly again, they're just kind of, they, I, they're, they're searching for all their stuff and they recently just find it. It's crazy. But if you guys watch one of my older videos, there's a guy who had a beta uh, starter deck box I bought years, years ago. And that box, uh, it's empty. And that box was basically, uh, you know, one of those things where they, uh, I think it was a story goes, there was, he bought three of them. I think he was the guy with the credit card at the time or something. He had the money and his other friends were like, oh yeah, I'll pay you back. They never did. And he just kept it in his whatever base, um, closet. Luckily he kept it because it became a huge windfall of money. Um, and that's awesome. So, you know, there you go. It tells you that pay your bills, everybody. These are just more random. Oh, there's Jester's mask, Jester's cap. Almost looks like he had, yeah, he was telling me he had a Ice Age set. And these are all the better cards. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, you know, that does happen. Like there's, there's stories and tales of people, you know, like, hey, I was stuck with this box and it, now it's worth like, you know, at that time I bought it, it was like 25K. And nowadays, a beta starter deck box, oh my God, oh, the decks, even one deck could be 25K. So it's 10 decks, quarter million, is that correct? Yeah, quarter million, because there's 10 decks, wow. These are Mercadian Mass, okay. Only card here is, there's some foils, but is there a port? No, no port, okay. Not yet. The dark. If you're ever looking to sell or anything, you can always contact me, vintagemagic.com. Always interested in buying. Um, you know, I, it doesn't matter if you're played or not. I get that question a lot. Dan, do you buy played cards? Yes, I do. Uh, you only sell gem mint cards or whatever. And oh, something's falling down. You know, I, I, are you sure you deal with that? Yes, I do. I mean, it's just kind of like one of those things where you, you know, I buy so many collections and there's a lot of played stuff and it, it makes perfect sense to get involved in that. I, I think early in my business, I didn't. Sorry, my son is wondering what the hell am I doing, and I'm looking at magic cards. There's Mirage. I don't think there's any Lion's Eye Diamonds. I think we just bring them out here. Uh, maybe he, well, there might be. Let's see, is there? Velder Yeah, this might be a set. Hold on a sec. Let's 
there one? No, not another one. The LED Lion's Eye Diamond is the big card. Natural order. That's Visions. Okay, let's see. There's some alliances. Yeah, no. Nope. Force of Will. This is like a set he had. And, back, and this looks like he had like a binder or something. I think he told me that. Narwhale. That is, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's that guy? MTG Lions favorite card. Homelands. Favorite card. All right. Next box coming up. All right. So how was this one? Oh, this one right here. I hope you guys had a good week. And uh, I don't know I'm going to post this video, but I hope you had a good weekend. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of crazy. You know, like every collection is a little unique. I don't know if you've noticed that. Uh, some are very different. These last two boxes here. Some of these boxes, some of these collections are very, 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 very um, normal. You know, how would they say? Some are pretty exotic. They have lots of different fancy misprints, stuff like that. And I just like looking at the old cards. It's awesome. All right, let's take a look. Sonic Blast, here we go. Unlimited Berserk. Ooh, I'm aroused now. Beta Ice Storm. Another one, Script Scrice, Craw Worm, and Alpha Note, Plague Rats, all beta here, Stone Rain. Underground Sea, here's the revise, wow. Underground Sea, Plateau, 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 Scrubland, 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 Taiga, Taiga, Taiga. All right, well, there's a lot of them here. All right, let's see. A lot, well, there's a lot of dual lands here. Dual lands have gone up a lot. Uh, I mean, there's some, and definitely that's, the box is commensurate with that. Look at that. Look at that. So many dual lands. Wow. Okay. All right. Nick, please don't rip up the seat. Gosh. The kid is now four. It's crazy. Nick, I'm almost done. I have one more box. Nick, throw that in the garbage. Oh, here we go. Jazam the Jin. A uh, played one could even go for $1,000 these days. The garbage, please. Another force of will. All right, that was a pretty. This box was the best box in terms of value, hands down. Good packaging, too, by the way. It's, it's funny, this deck thing actually fits perfectly, so you don't have to worry about. Um, oops. How's this working? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so the next box, the final box, the final countdown. Will there be an Alpha Lotus? I don't think so. He didn't say that. He said he had dual lands. Oh, I just screwed that all. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, the packaging on this one was tough because the all together all right so let's see what we got the final box of the day of this collection what do you guys think about this collection yeah it seems like uh overall a lot of player cards um some sets multi you know like he opened must have opened a lot of boxes here and there um <coughs> i can usually tell kind of what range of collection it is from quality i mean some of the best collections i've seen um, actually are in binders and they're stuffed with you know a few cards here and there but they don't move around a lot and the condition of them is super nice sometimes i see them in these type of white boxes they're all minty cards those are generally and then so and then obviously the most best solution is every single card is in um car uh these top loaders right here like this top loaders so that's the best scenario all right quicksilver this is urza's test uh, legacy and this is some um, fourth edition urza's power plants urza stuff nicobolus concordant oh look at that look at that 
a leaping lizard. Holy moly, but crimped. You guys seen that? That is due to, that's a misprint. Some people collect um, those type of cards. They're kind of cool. All right, and we got some homelands. Oh, Mirage, Hammer of Board Garden. This card was amazing back in the day. And, okay, and then I'll stop here. These are these Gold Border uh, World Championship decks. The back are black. So I'm saying, so this one was a championship deck. Um, and I don't have the guy's name. Tokyo999 by, oh, Kyle Bude. Yeah, he was uh, the one of the champions back in the day. So that's pretty cool. And uh, you'll see, I, I don't know if, I don't think these cards are uh, tournament legal, actually. Um, but the, well, these are all the original printing, but he had it signed right there. You see how it's signed, um, like it's printed on there. It's kind of cool. But they're not tournament legal. But just this deck is awesome. And that's a random card. City of Traders from Exodus, another great card. All right. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, these are just so these are not uh, spectacular. Here's a content list. That's kind of cool. Look at that. All right. And you notice that? Uh, oh, this is a uh, yeah. This is his his deck. I don't know what place he got though. I don't know. Okay. That it's just uh, I think he was such a world class player. I think he won the world. He was a, um, a world championship in Magic back in the day. Mastercore. God, this card. Urza's Destiny. Great card. Why is this so good? At the beginning of upkeep, you may choose and discard a card from your hand. If you don't, sacrifice Mastercore. It is two mana, deals one damage to target creature, regenerate. Oh, you can regenerate it. Oh, very interesting. Okay. If you don't pay it. Grim Monolith. Oh, nice. All right. Well, that's about it. It's just uh, this deck is pretty much the finale. Wasn't as boom, boom, ba crazy as the, uh, you know, like some of the other videos. But guys, definitely some great value. If you're interested in bidding on the cards, especially the revised dual lands and whatnot, contact me at vintagemagic.com. Oh, there's a Jandal, the revised Jandal saddlebags. But contact me again. Um, at vintagemagic.com. Uh, I will be putting this on our eBay auction, especially the more significant versions. And uh, yeah, we'll hit you on the next video. Again, you know, check it out, eBay auction on our eBay store, no reserve. Or uh, if you're interested in some of the other playables, contact me at vintagemagic.com. Go to contact us. But I will do a follow-up video on what's being listed on eBay. Uh, I tend to do that and check out our playlist for that. All right, guys, thanks again. Thanks to my client for sending these cards for us to sell. I appreciate the business. Have a wonderful week. Take care. Okay. They are racing in the Swiss Alps. Brian Weissman and Daniel Chang. On your marks, get set, go. Oh my God, Daniel won! Daniel won! Hey everyone, it's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. I wanna share with you more about how we handle consignments. So to begin the consignment process, we actually need to start with the consultation service. In this consultation, I will determine what you're looking to do. And generally, consigners usually tell me, hey, Dan, I'm looking to sell my items and maximize the value of their collection. After we determine through the consultation, I usually like to do an appraisal process. And an appraisal process in terms of a consignment is more fitted towards authenticity and valuation for current market values. From there, after a contract is crafted and signed, we will then receive the items from you. The reason why our consignment process is very thorough is we also identify cards that could be graded so then they can maximize higher dollar values. So the payment process is very simple. Once we have sold your items, you'll get an updated ledger and we will process payment um, for whatever form of payment you need. As a consigner, you're gonna experience our white glove service. What that means is I'm gonna personally handle your collectibles from beginning to end. And rest assured, 
the client that purchases your collectibles will also receive the same white glove service. It's a signature service that I really pride myself on in working closely with my clients. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com.